Do you believe that most people think like yourself, that animals somehow demonstrate the truth of God's existence? No, not at all, because I certainly didn't growing up. I believed in the story of evolution as a way of explaining everything, so I didn't even believe in God. And I understand that not everyone appreciates the genius of all of God's creatures. And this makes sense because not only do animals reflect the genius of God's creation, but they can also reveal the truth of the fall in Genesis 3. Because the reality is we don't live in the very good world that God created, but in the sin-cursed world where animals and people often invoke a lot of fear. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. John 1 verse 3. What kind of animals are you talking about? Well, um, take spiders, for example. There are certain people in the world that really don't like spiders. And when I say that they really don't like spiders, I mean they really, really don't like them at all. So appeals to how beneficial they are because of how many flies they eat, have, that has zero effect on these folks. It's called arachnophobia. And one of my dear sisters-in-law uh, fits this profile perfectly. So. Well, let me tell you a story um, that I'm sure all of spiderdom has heard. <laughs> it was the dreaded tale of the day when she unleashed her wrath upon a lonely little fellow that intruded on her bath one afternoon, leaving her trapped in a tub with no way out. As my big brother tells it, he came to know about the incident upon his return from work. So he stepped into the bathroom to wash up for dinner and he noticed that behind the uh, shower curtain, the bathwater was still sitting there and there was this curious film floating on it. So he pulled the plastic sheet back all the way and it revealed this huge mountain of shaving cream in one corner, slowly oozing down the side with this abandoned tin in the water. And buried deep somewhere within that eight ounces of Barbasol lay the sorry remains of an embalmed arachnid that never knew what hit him. Too bad for that little guy that he hadn't been chatting with some faraway cousins beforehand, as he could perhaps have learned a neat trick that might have saved him. In 2012, unbeknownst to each other at the time, two US biologists discovered two different species of spiders with truly amazing behavior and abilities. One was located in Peru in the Amazon basin and the other 11,000 miles away in the Philippines. To add to their astonishment, the researchers soon realized that not only did these spiders construct colossal decoy clones, but they purposefully and personally animated them as well. To add to the realism of their imitation spiders, it was found that the real spiders crouched beside them and shook their webs when predators came near, causing them to move around like monstrous marionettes. In doing so, they made their doppelganger creations appear to come to life. The result was twofold. Either the astonishingly realistic image of the giant spider provided a menacing warning that scared away creatures that might have dared to pick on the real, smaller spider, or it provided a seemingly big and juicy false target for predators that mistook the decoy for the real owner of the web. Would-be attackers either fled from Big Brother or wound up with a mouthful of mossy mulch for their efforts. Not only is this behavior fascinatingly complex, but it's unprecedented in the animal kingdom. To my knowledge, we have no other example of creatures creating decoys of themselves to escape predation. How on earth could a simple spider contain the capacity to carry this out? Not surprisingly, most reports on the subject don't credit or glorify God for his incredible handiwork or mention the obvious intelligent design behind it. Instead, the evolutionary storytelling accompanying the reports describing the decoy spider typically downplay the truly stupefying phenomena on display in these creatures. For example, even though biologist and science educator Phil Torres said it was unlike anything he'd ever seen, saying, it blew my mind, he also said, it seems like a really well-evolved and very specialized behavior. Considering that spiders can already make really impressive geometric designs with their webs, it's no surprise that they can take that leap to make an impressive design with debris and other things. 
So let me get this straight. Because spiders can already do impressive things, it shouldn't surprise us they can do astonishing, mind-blowing things as well. You see, even the ability to create the varied, intricate webs spiders make is incredibly difficult to explain from a naturalistic standpoint. But one could try to argue it involves many repetitive, reoccurring movements that somehow got ingrained into the DNA coding of spiders through random mutations over millennia. However, in terms of sophistication and complexity, making an exaggerated image of yourself and animating it under very specific circumstances far exceeds those parameters. There are only two choices here. One, either spiders somehow have the cognitive and communicative ability to think this strategy through and somehow pass it on to others in their collective communities, or two, they have deep, ingrained, coded genetic information that activates programs that allow them to accomplish these feats. We must understand that if option one is correct and that these spiders have thought this through, then they are deliberately manipulating the world around them to a level that only human beings have ever been observed doing. In order to create a decoy of itself, it would have to be self-aware and know it's a spider in relation to other things and be able to discern the difference between itself and other spiders. It would also have to recognize that a duplicate of itself, which looked like a spider but actually wasn't, might somehow protect it from predators it may encounter in the future and so would have to have an understanding of time and potential events. It would have to understand that making a larger, moving spider would be somehow better for scaring predators or to be a decoy, and know to manipulate the dummy when predators were near. Like a farmer setting up a scarecrow, it would have to reason about past experiences to make conclusions about the future by using information in the present, all to best look after its own interests. In effect, it would be thinking in the same way you or I do, which is why most scientists deny this option. As one researcher put it, when it was first reported in late 2012, the story received a fair amount of attention because of the romanticized idea behind it that people are thinking these spiders are so clever that they're building these structures that look like larger spiders. But it's not like these spiders are looking at another spider and designing it based on that. This design is just what has been selected for. In that way, it's ingrained into their DNA and which translates into their behavior, he says. Spiders that have these more spider-like looking decoys are more successful than those who don't. It's not the spider itself, it's evolution that's the amazing thing. The spiders are dummies, but at the same time, they are smart enough to make the decision to know what should and what shouldn't go into that structure. Do you see the problem with the evolutionary musings here? The spiders aren't smart, they're dummies, but they're smart enough to know what to do and when to do it. It's not the spider itself, but evolution that's amazing. The fact is, we all know that even the most brilliant computer programmers and engineers on the planet couldn't create and house the micro-engineered programming needed to duplicate these creatures' activities. When you break it down, what evolutionists are arguing for is that purely naturalistic forces have generated incredibly complex programming in diminutive, primitive spiders that equal the decision-making ability of human beings. All with a simplistic explanation that some random spiders that supposedly made more spider-looking clumps of trash in their webs somehow survived better. Ignoring the fact that other spiders survive just fine without those abilities, so why would they need them to evolve them to survive? Just think of the faith it requires to believe that an initial random genetic mutation, a spelling mistake in DNA, somehow developed that specifically affected the behavior in a group of spiders that caused them to mindlessly gather and arrange clumps of debris in their web. That's one of the reasons spiders abandon webs and make new ones, as it causes them to fall apart more quickly. Even if we put aside other questions, like how these mutations somehow got activated and integrated into their behavioral programming for the moment, why would we believe more mutations would cause them to arrange bits of debris more specifically like the multiple legs, head, and thorax of a spider? 
Why wouldn't shapes like a predatory bird, snake, or lizard prove more effective and be selected? Remember that all the while this supposedly happened, the spiders are not cognitively aware that they're doing any of this. It's all just instinct, like breathing or blinking, etc. But this would eventually also somehow require mutations that cause them to shake their web as well as the programming to only do it when predators are nearby, which requires if A, then B type programming. In the end, evolutionary ideas like this are not science. They're simply storytelling. No one saw it happen. You can't perform an experiment to duplicate it. And there are absolutely no similar examples in nature of a comparable thing happening. And yet the idea of God creating is mocked more than anything else in academia today. However, belief in the almighty, all-powerful God of Scripture is so much more intellectually, spiritually, philosophically, and scientifically sound than any compromise with evolutionary musings could ever be. Why on earth should we believe incredible abilities, such as the spider decoy demonstrates, could have developed by chance?